Hey YouTube, it's Luke. I'm back again with you today with part two of my series. This one's going to be titled Intro to Stick or Stick 101. I'm pretty excited about this. Stick welding is one of my favorite processes and I'm sure it'll be one of yours too. Um, what's neat about it is the simplicity and the beauty of it. If you're good at it, you can make your welds look awesome and you don't need a lot of equipment. All you need is a stick welder. There's no gas tanks, gas hoses, wire spools or any of that. So the simplicity of it is awesome. So let's just dive right into it. All right, so stick welding is just like it sounds. Basically, you're welding with a stick or a stick electrode, as they call it. Now, what a stick electrode is, is basically just a piece of mild steel filler material, okay? It's a round rod that's coated in something called flux, okay? Now, what happens is the rod's used for two purposes. One is to conduct electricity, if you've seen my first video. And number two is to melt and deposit filler material in your weld bead. The flux on the outside is meant to shield the weld. As electricity passes through the flux, it burns off and it creates a gas. The gas basically keeps the atmosphere out. Our atmosphere that we breathe is good for us, but it's not good for welds. It provides contamination to the weld. So flux creates a gas shield around the weld. Pretty neat. Now the flux on a stick weld um, is going to be a lot thicker and produce more smoke or more um, shielding capability than say a gas like a MIG or something like that where you use like a trimix gas because of the density of the shielding that comes off of this it's better for high wind applications or outdoor applications so stick welding is very versatile um, very functional now if you're new to stick welding you'll notice that there's a lot of different options for sticks out there. There's 7018, 6010, 6011, 6013, there, there's a whole number of them. And we could have a five hour long video on all the different electrodes that are out there and all the different types of fluxes that are on all the electrodes. But I'm going to try and make this pretty simple for you so you can kind of get a basic understanding of what you're doing when you're buying a stick electrode. Okay. Now stick electrodes are identified by an E, which stands for electrode, and then four digits following the E. Okay. As an example here, in my electrode holder that's not hooked to anything, I have some 6011. Okay. So let's break down what 6011 is real quick. All right. All right. <clears throat> I'll even throw the E in there for you. Okay. Now E stands for electrode. Okay. Pretty straightforward. Now, the next thing that you can break down in this series of numbers is the 60, okay? It's not the first digit, it's the first two digits. The 60 stands for tensile strength in thousands of pounds, okay? So this rod, when welded, once the filler material is in, is capable of handling a tensile strength of 60,000 pounds. Consequently, if you buy a 7018 rod, it's going to be a little stronger. It's going to be able to handle 70,000 pounds. <clears throat> the next number stands in and of itself, and that number indicates position. Okay, I'll write that on there. Most rods that you're going to come across are going to have a one these days, and what that means is a one is an all position rod. So this rod is capable of welding uphill, horizontal, overhead, whatever the nature of it. Um, you may see some older rods or some unique rods with like a three that's only good for flat welding or that's only good for horizontal or whatever the situation may be. Um, but pretty much any rod you're going to come across these days is going to be an all position rod. Now the last number is kind of the most complicated number. The last number one in this 6011 is the flux composition. Each rod is going to have a very different number at the end. And like 7018, 7014, 6013, they all have a different ending number. And what that number signifies is, on a chart, there's actually a chart that tells you what the flux is made out of on the rod. So this material that's wrapped around this steel electrode here is actually made up of cellulose. It's cellulose-based, okay? The one, two, three is all cellulose-based. It's basically trees, paper, that kind of stuff. So when you weld with a 6011 rod, you can smell that cellulose. It almost smells like wood burning or paper burning or something like that. With a 7018 rod, the 8 indicates more of a mineral-based flux. So you're going to get a different smell out of that rod, and consequently you're going to get a different shielding. The flux indicator at the end of the rod will also tell you what the slag is going to be like on the rod. Example, a 7018 rod is going to produce a very heavy slag that peels up very easily. A 6010 or a 6011 rod is going to have a very light slag that's going to be hard to chip off. So just something to think about when you're choosing a rod. 
All right, now we could have several hours talking about flux, but let's move on to the next thing. The next thing I want to talk about is called arc length. Okay, with a stick weld, it's important that you keep the correct arc length. An arc length is the distance between your base metal and the end of your electrode. As the electrode consumes or it melts, you're going to have to tighten up your arc gap so that you don't long arc, as they call it, or short arc. What happens when you long arc, if you've seen my first video, is that the greater the distance between the base material and the electrode, the more heat there is. So if you have a longer arc length, you're going to be overheating your electrode or your weld. Consequently, with too short of an arc length, it's going to be too cold. The electricity doesn't have a chance to pass through enough atmosphere to create enough resistance and heat to get good penetration. So if you drag your rod directly on the plate, you're going to get a very cold weld that did not penetrate well. What's important is to find that perfect arc length, right around maybe an eighth of an inch, depending on the rod that you're using. Okay? So as an example, I'll draw this for you. What you have is you have your base material, and you've got your electrode holder. You guys know how great my drawings are. And you have your electrode. Okay? This distance right here is going to be your arc length. Okay? If you have too long of an arc length, what you're going to notice is the base material melts away and it's not being filled by filler material because the filler material is turning into spatter. Spatter is when you get little dots all over your base plate. When, with welding, especially with stick, you're going to get some amount of spatter. However, if you have too much, it's an indication that your arc length is too long. On the other hand, if your arc length is too short and your weld is too cold, what you're going to get is a very high weld beam with a lack of penetration. It's also going to be very narrow. Um, there's a lot of images you could search on Google Images to show you the difference between a weld that's too cold and too hot. My drawings aren't going to do it justice, so maybe look into that after this video. So finding that perfect arc length is going to give you the perfect amount of penetration and the perfect looking weld bead. So keep that in mind. And as you're welding, you have to keep moving your electrode towards your base material to keep the arc length exactly the same all the way across. All right, the next thing I want to talk about in this is striking an arc. Someone who's new to welding in general will have a difficult time with a stick welder striking an arc. The reason why is because most people will touch the electrode directly to the base material, and what happens is the current that's passing through welds the end of the electrode directly to the base material, and you can't get it off. They call it stick because it sticks. <laughs> so when it sticks, you have to wiggle it left and right and jerk it off. All right, so you just rip it off of the base metal. Now, as you get better at welding, especially with stick, you won't get this stick that happens when you first try and strike the arc. What you'll find out is that if you hold the electrode at about a 45 degree angle, that's a really good angle, and you scrape it almost like you're striking a match, that's going to be the best way to get an arc going. All right, now as I said, this is going to be a stick welding 101, so I'm not going to get into any advanced topics about out of position welding at this point. What I want to do is I just want to do a little welding for you guys, particularly arc strength. guys, again, this has just been a brief overview of SMAW, shielded metal arc welding or stick welding as they call it. If you guys have any comments or questions, leave them below. I'll be glad to answer them for you. There's going to be many more stick welding videos. I'm going to get more into the particular electrodes that are out there, um, into out of position welding, like how to weld vertical up or overhead, maybe some pipe welding and things like that. But for now, just some basics here. So let me know if you need anything else. And thanks again for watching. Please subscribe to my channel.